Hello everyone. I Neelish Kumar Sen, working as an assistant professor, ABS Engineering College, Gatiaba. Today in this very tutorial, we are going to learn about non-contiguous memory allocation. That is a part of memory management and operating system. In this very video series, we are going to learn about phasing, single phasing and multi-level phasing. Earlier we had discussed about fixed partitioning in which we divide the memory into equal and unequal fixed size partitions at booting time and dynamic partitioning at which we create partitions as and when programs loaded. Now, in this very tutorial, we are going to learn about simple phasing and multi-level phasing. In simple phasing, we divide the whole memory into equal size phases and load program into available phases. That is the advancement of the contiguous memory allocation and to overcome the drawbacks of contiguous memory allocation, we use phasing. And uh, that two phasing is also having some advantages and disadvantages that we'll discuss later. Uh, but uh, for now being, we are going to learn the concept of phasing, how that phasing is going to overcome the drawbacks of internal fragmentations and external fragmentations in phasing. And uh, in the latter series, we will cover simple segmentations, virtual memory phasing, virtual memory segmentations, phase segmentations, and overlays. So, as programmers reference a particular memory address or uh, address space, as and when they require to access a particular memory cell, to do so, they require some address that is what the logical address is, which is generated by the CPU. So that logical address is what a reference to a particular memory location and that too independent with the current assignment of the data with the physical world. As you can see uh, in this diagram, we are having microprocessor 86, 8086, with having phasing enabled in it. So, in that very microprocessor or CPU, how that memory address translation works, how that phasing is going to calculate that logical address to the physical one. So in this, assembly instructions were written in, uh, were there in the program and it is executing inside the CPU and that CPU will generate the logical address. Then it goes to the segmentation unit what it is that we will discuss later and that will generate again a linear address and that linear address will be converted into the phasing unit and later we'll get the physical address where that data should be resized. So the calculation of addresses and uh, the interrupts calls, how that causes So in this, what we are having a base register and the bound register. So base register is what for the starting address of the cell and bound register is the limit for that very cell. Whenever the user or the pro, uh, process requests for a particular address, it checks whether it belongs to the limit or not. So one need to have a comparator as we also discussed in my previous video. That comparator checks whether the requested address is greater than or equals to the bounded register or not. If it is greater one, then it will go into the interrupt. If it is not, the logical address and the base register will get performed adder operations and will be provided to the comparator and it will get allocated to the physical address. 
So that physical address is maintained inside, uh, also maintained inside the PCV, where the program uh, information regarding the program is residing about the data, about the stack and kernel stack also is there. So what is base register? So it holds the physical address at to all program addresses. And bound registers are those which is used to detect accesses beyond the end of the allocated memory, may have length instead of end address and provides protection to for the operating system so that none of the process can interact with each other and can overlap with each other. And none of the process or some malicious programs, malware, viruses can interact with the operating system as there is a partition separated with the fence register. And uh, easy to move programs in memory. So that is again the main advantage of non-contagious memory allocation as we are not going to provide the memory segment and once in a whole, but we are providing the memory separately for a particular process and that to non-contagious manner. So these values are set when the process is loaded and when the process is swept in and out. And uh, this is what the largely plays by the phase. So now, phasing is what? It is a non-contagious memory allocation which assigns the separate memory blocks at the different locations in main memory that to in a non-consecutive manner to a requesting process. So pacing in this, a process or a logical address is divided into a number of fixed sizes called pages. And in frames, the physical memory is also pre-divided into same fixed size blocks as the size of the pages. And this is called what the page frames are. Here are some advantages and disadvantages too. Advantages are it uses memory management algorithm, easy, no need for external fragmentation, and swapping becomes easy between equal size phases and phase frames. As we discussed, the phase and frame size must be equal. So this is what our page size and this is what page page pages and this is what our page. And these are what the pages. So we divide process that is residing, currently residing in the secondary memory. So, let's suppose we are having a process of uh, 8 kV, let's suppose 8 kV. So, and we are expected to have a page size of uh, four. So total number of pages would be two. Here are the pages P J one P one. So total process size, and here is what the number of processes or page size. So page size means number of bytes that can be accommodated inside the pages. So by dividing these two, we are getting total number of pages at which we are going to divide the process. So here the process are A, B, C, and D. In the phase B, F, C, and F. So these are called what the bytes are. Bytes, these are the pages. And these pages are replaced back to the 
spring, uh, which, which is the partition of what? Main map. So that too, again, of same size as that of the pages are. So each frame, F0, F1, F2, F3, likewise, can accommodate exactly number of processes by x to the frame. So here in this two A, B, C, and so these are what one by one A, then B, then C, then D. As I don't have that much enough space in to draw. So consider this so one after other they are allocated. So it is what the exact same amount of space are there so that one can easily map in between. Let us consider some other example too. In this, one can say that how you are going to capture the information regarding the process size and all. So, Let's suppose we are having a process size of 4 kb. And each size is of 2 kb. Then how many pages would be there? So it is it will be calculated by the process size divided by the page size. So total number of two pages would be there. It is well known that each and every process which is going to be executed inside the CPU is having some specific ID. Let's suppose in our case, we are considering that it is PRC. Let's take this as an example. So PR7 is what the process ID, that is the unique ID as there are numerous millions of processes residing inside the main memory in today's modern computer system. So as of now, we are considering that only one process is there and how that process is going to accommodate inside the main memory and how that uh, logical address is going to calculate the physical address that we are the that exact process is residing. And so we divided our pages into two equal partitions at which we are holding our processes. So all these are of, let's say, one case. Okay. And let's suppose our main memory that is of 16 KB. And frame size would be what? Frame size will always be equal to the page size. Mark that word. So frame size is what? 2 KB 2. So number of frames that uh, main memory will have would be how many? So that is what 16 divided by 2 will be 8. So consider that this is what
তার মেইন মামরি ওয়ান টু থ্রি ফোর ফাইভ I hope till now you are comfortable enough to get the information regarding what is page and what are pages and how one is going to calculate that total number of pages would be and total number of pages would be. So partition the main memory into a small equal size chunks and divide each process into the same size chunks. Such chunks of a process are called pages. These chunks are what the pages are. And chunks of memory, if we are going to divide the main memory, are known as frames. Operating system is the one which is also maintaining a table, which is space table for each individual process that contains frame location for each phase in the process memory address consists of a phase number and offset address too within the phase itself. Let's suppose we are having a frame of 15 equal partitions. In this there is a process A arise since our main memory is initially empty, so it will be it will got accommodated into the main memory. Later, we are having a process of 3 kV. Let's suppose the each partition is of 1 kV. So the process B, B would be what 3 kV. And uh, in our main memory, there is enough space to accommodate such process, so it will be it will got placed. Later, we are considering that another process C, which is of 4 kV of size, again it will got accommodated. Later, after some time, my process B dot eliminated as it's completely executed. So process B got eliminated from the main memory. So what will happen? We are having a process B also, which is of 5 kV. Since we are having only 4 blocks available, so that process B cannot accommodate it inside the main memory. And meanwhile, our process B is got finished. So it will be freed from the memory and process D will be allocated. Now you see that parts of a process D out of which four, five, six, these are accommodated at some other block and remaining 11 and 12 is accommodated at some other location. That is what 
the advantages of non-contiguous mammal allocation in which we remove the drawback as internal fragmentation. <clears throat> Here you can again see that suppose we are having of 16 kb of mam main mammary and we are having a process a1 process a3 each of the processes are 4 kb and process a5 came and which is of 8 kb in size since a1 and a3 is accommodated at random locations meanwhile some uh, places are empty so process a5 will get accommodated accordingly this is what the major advantages of the, uh, having the page size equal to the frame size Non-contiguous memory allocation permits a program's memory to be physically non-contiguous so that it can be allocated from wherever available, as we earlier see in the example. This avoids what the fragmentations and it has obvious that compaction too. So frames are what the physical blocks, pages are what the logical blocks. So here you can see that as uh, we earlier discussed about CPU generates what? Logical address. It is what generating logical address, which is having a small p and a small d in it. So that we'll discuss in a meanwhile, what is a small p and a small d. For now, size of frames divide or uh, size of pages, it is defined by the hardware and that is calculated by the power of 2, 2 to the power n. So by using this, hardware is going to calculate size of the frames or page. So how that hardware is going to be determined? So page number means index into the table at which index it is going to be accommodated and offset. So collectively, this is what the page number is. And the base num base address, which we are getting from the page table that is maintained by the operating system and the offset. So <clears throat> what is offset? Till now we understand about the pages and frames. What are pages and what are frames? Uh, remember that I used to define uh, store a b c and d and i call them as bytes so these are nothing but the offset why it is so as these are stored at different locations they are separated through with each other so that if one is one wants to exit uh, get access of this line or this particular page. So this is residing at location 2. So no other location will get uh, fetched except 2. So this is what offset, also known as bytes here. Now consider an example that we are having pages p0 p1 p2 and p3 and again we are having a print f0 f1 f2 f3 f4 F5, F6, F7. Um, don't think that uh, here in this uh, diagram, each of the frames are not in equal in size. 
just consider that uh, they are equal in nature as uh, I do not have enough space available. Now, uh, let's suppose that the space of frames This is occupied by some other process, or let's say uh, an operating system is there. Consider that. So these are what the spaces already occupied by the operating system. So the remaining portions of the main memory will be accommodated by the pages which we are having currently. So in this, let's suppose that P0 got placed at what? Frame 5. A, B, C, D are there. And the P0 is also having A, B, C, D. So P0 is accommodated at frame 5. Similarly, phase 1 is accommodated at frame 6. Phase 2 accommodated at frame 1, I, J, K, L. Is there and phase B accommodated as frame 2 that is MLOP. And uh, how we calculate these that is what the considerations. So <clears throat> now, as I told that operating system manages phase table. Operating system managing phase table. Here are the pages are, and here frames. Now suppose we are having a CPU which is generating logical address, and we have to fetch the information regarding the physical address and how this is going to be done. How we are going to calculate that physical address? on the basis of the page. So to do so, we are having some information. Consider that if you generating what logical address and that logical address contains what? A small p comma a small t. Now what is a small p and a small t? So a small t, p are what? Page number. And a small d as I already said, offset. The offsets are what? The byte information. Byte. So, so uh, sorry, so we, uh, there is something. Now uh, that is what the capital P is. Or let it be, it is a small p. So, a small p and a small d is there. So, that is what the small p. So, a small p is what? The page number. And capital P we are using is that is what the page size. Now, if we want to get about information about the small p, how we are going to calculate that information. So it is what L divided by capital T. Now, what is L is? So L is what the 
the information or the location of the page bytes which are uh, going to be fed or accessed. So here in this very example, uh, let's suppose we are asking about the ninth position. So what our L would be what? Nine. And it should be divided by what? The capital P. And capital P is what the page size. And in this very example, we are having what the page size is of four. A, B, C, D, or one, two, three, four, four, five, six, seven. So each of the page sizes are of four. So nine divided by four. So whatever we are going to calculate, nine divided by four, that is two. That is what the page number. So P and we calculated a small P. So P a small P means we can write like what P two. So as you can see that nine nine is uh, allocated at what page? That is P two. Now we have to calculate a small d. So a small d is calculated what L mod P. So that is what nine mod four. So it will give you what the remainder is. So four. Or to the eight, so remainder would be one. So what is this? So remainder will inform you about the hmm, offset at which offset you are going to calculate. Now to calculate physical address means inside the main memory where it is located so what is the formula for that to calculate physical address let suppose physical address is represented by ch so it is calculated by what brain size multiplied by page size space size and small d so here in this very example, from page table, we are going to calculate the page and frames. So at frame what? One multiplied by P means number of pages. So total number of pages, what we are having in this four. And what it is the D, what the D is. So 4 plus 1 is 5. So 4 plus 1 is 5. As you can see that I is located at 4. A is located at 5. A is located at 6. And at 7, L is here. And that is what the 5 is we calculated. So this is what the physical address, physical location of that very byte. So this is the way to finding out the number of pages, number of frames, and how those pages are got accommodated inside the main memory, and how we are going to fetch uh, the physical address on the basis of logical addresses. So this is what the single page is. There are some drawbacks in multi-level phasing that it avoids the internal fragmentation, but external fragmentations are there. How to manage them? To manage them, we require for another technique or another mechanism that is multi-level phasing. And one more thing, if, what if the number of size is larger than the available frames. In that, let's suppose it is having uh, four bytes of space and we want to accommodate eight bytes, which is not at all possible. Then how we are going to solve such problem? As memory are fixed in nature, main memory are fixed in nature, we cannot change 
uh, at one time. So to do so, what we divide the frames into number of pages again. We divide the that pages to number of pages. So fine. Uh, at last, what I mean to say is we are having pages inside the pages, pages inside the pages. Until the long last, the process got pages. This is all about the multi-level paging. So multi-level paging is a scheme that consists of two or more levels of page tables in a hierarchical manner. It is also called as hierarchical paging. And these of the level one page table are pointers which will point to the level two page means at level one the end whatever the entries are made these are just work these work as a pointer to the page two level two page table and that level two page table uh entries will work as again uh pointers to the next similarly so entries of the last level page table it is to actual frame information so label will contains what the single page table information and the address of that table which is stored in the ptvr page table base register that is what the most important term so let's have a look into the terminology which we are going to calculate in this so number of entries in a page table is going to be calculated by what the virtual address is page size divided by the page size. So to, by doing so, we are going to calculate the number of pages. And the virtual address is page size is what, uh, as I earlier mentioned that it is calculated by the two to the power. So two to the power and uh, with the byte size or uh, the size available. And size of table, it should not equal to the number uh, of entries on a page table multiplied by the size of PD, E, page table and fees. Why it is so? It is so because if the page table size is higher the desired one, then it will create one more label. And if it founds that it is again not able to accommodate the space, so it will again further divide the so um, till now we see that we are having page inside the page, page inside the page. So it is obvious that one is referencing to the other and this will reference to the someone else. So it is obvious that the address is going to be bigger as the single label page. So logical address, which is sometimes also known as virtual address, it is going to be higher as there is a pointer. So it is of 10 bits, again 10 bits, then 12 bits of the offset address. So virtual address, this is what the program is having. And that initial address is to be uh, going to be calculated as adder at which root page table pointer are and that root page table contains what the page table entries means how many number of pages are inside the root page table or master page and this next part of the logical address is going to be add into that entries later on we are calculating what will we going to calculate the page uh, considering into the page table which contains the page table and key and that is going to be a frame as we uh, recently did in our example in the single label page. so you just take this this is what the extra part apart from the uh, single uh, single label page in the multi-level paging, this is the extra. Why it is so? Since this is what the 
referencing for the root phase table or the master phase table. It is obvious that master phase table contains the number of pages inside it. So later it will be used by the remaining part. And on the basis of the calculation, as we did earlier, we are going to calculate frame. And as we are having offset, so we are going to get that digital address and page frame. So in this, you can uh, see three level phasing. So here we are having what? Page table base register, which is having got the root table or root phasing address. And at level one, what it is, what is the address? Both the address is going to be added up. And we are going to calculate phase table entries for that. And that phase table entries will work as a pointer to the page two, which is inside the page one. So this pointer information will be used to fetch the information or to fetch the page table entries of P2 using the adder. So it will again create page table entries as this is what again the pointer and pointer to whom that is what the P3 is. So that P3 is going to calculate final P3 which is having the information regarding the same and the offset we are having earlier. So on the PT information, we are going to calculate the frame and uh, using the offset, sorry, using the offset, we are going to calculate the physical address. And by doing so, we finally got the physical address using the virtual or logical address. So this is all about we discussed earlier in the uh, in, uh, diagram. Now let's have an uh, example regarding the same multi-level phasing. So consider a virtual memory system with a physical memory of 8 GB. Mm. Uh, there might be some wrong information. Uh, 8 KB is this. So consider that. Uh, 8 KB, a page size of 8 KB. Page size is given what? How much? 8 KB page size and physical memory is of 8 GB and 246 bit virtual address are given. Assume every page table exactly fits into a single page. If page table entry size is 4B, then how many labels of page tables would be required? So uh, after uh, you know, discussing the question, it is obvious that it is not from the single page. Eh? We are not going to solve in a single page. It requires phasing again and again. So that is what, how many labels it will require to get finally accommodated and to calculate the physical So, as of now, page size is what? 8 KB that is given. So, it is in byte 213 byte. Virtual address is page size is 246 byte, which is given to. So, page table entry is also given that is of up to what? 4 byte. So, 22 bytes. Now, number of pages or number of entries in a page table that is required is calculated what logical address is page size or virtual address also called divide by the page size. So it is what 246 byte we are having and 213 byte page size we are having. So finally we are having that much. Now size of the page table 
so number of entries in a page table multiplied by the size of the pt so that is what the the number of pages or number of entries on a particular page table multiplied by the size of the pt so uh, it is actually what 2 to the power so 2 to the power 33 2 to the power 2 is square so finally it will be 2 to the power 35 right Now, let me write over here. 2 to the power 46 and divide by 2 to the power 13. So, 2 to the power 33 is going to be calculated. And 2 to the power 33 multiplied by the size of PT. So, that is 4. So, 2 is square. So, to the power 35 right now size of the page table is greater than the page size as we uh, can see so to put it uh, we uh, one need to require what one more label means we have to create page inside the page at one level on this for uh, for now so size of page table is greater than fit the page size so number of page tables and last label would be what 2 to the power 35 bytes that we calculated and 2 to the power 13 bytes so we'll divide the these two so finally we are going to calculate how many bytes 2 to the power 22 bytes size of page table at second last level as it is again larger. So we are going to calculate PT 2 to the power 22 bytes and 2 square bytes. So finally 2 to the power 24 bytes. Since we need to uh, create one more level to the so size of page table at what? Second last level. So at second last level, what it, uh, what is the page size? That is what is the 2 to the power 24 bytes. And page size, page table is of 2 to the power 24 and uh, page size is of what? 2 to the power 13 bytes. So, by solving, on solving this, uh, sorry, it is what? 2 to the power 11 bytes. So, the base address of these tables are stored in page table at third last level. So, size of page table would be what? 2 to the power 11 bytes multiplied by 2 square bytes. It is already given. So finally, page size will be what? 2 to the power 13 bytes. So total number of labels we required to accommodate is three labels. So this is what the three labels required. Advantages of having multi-level paging as uh, till now, what we learned about multi-level paging so it reduces memory overhead, faster page, table lookup, and flexibility. And here are some disadvantages too of uh, having multi-level paging that in it increases the complexity uh, that we have to create pages inside the pages again and again until and unless the page got accommodated. To do so, one need to have a complex algorithm to calculate such overheads and it will make fragmentations and that to what external fragmentation it somehow overcome the fragmentations um, as compared with the single label paging but even though it is having the fragmentations these are the references which i used to prepare uh, such material in later part we'll discuss about segmentations and paste segmentation inverted phasing virtual memory and overlays 
Thank you.